Madam Chair and, and uh, Ms. Son, I think you're, you're getting a sense of frustration here. And, and let me, you keep talking about context. Let me give you some context. You know, you're one of a long line of Biden administration nominees who have made tweets and statements about Republicans being white supremacists, Republicans want to suppress the vote, Republicans, quote, beating up women and gays, that's your quote, uh, racist. And you know what? It's just tiring. It's really tiring. We, it was almost at some one point, it seemed like if you made one of these statements in a tweet, the Biden administration put you at the top of the list to nominate you, right? So you're part of that cohort. And it's frustrating. Do you understand why people get frustrated? Do you understand why millions of Americans look at this and go, really problematic. She does not have the temperament making these statements. Do you understand that? I understand that people are frustrated, and I don't like the partisanship either. Okay, You know, things have gotten sharper since 2016. But you keep saying sharper, but you're going to have enormous power if you're an FCC commissioner. Let me, let me just make two final points. One is just a correction for the record. You probably don't know it, but in terms of OAN, the president of OAN just tweeted out your lack of support for diverse voices makes her unqualified to be an FCC commissioner. That's Charles Herring. Maybe he's watching the hearing and has, been, uh, has changed his view. And similarly, the CEO of OAN just said, One American News, um, uh, the CEO and owner just tweeted that OAN will not, does not, and will not, will never support uh, Ms. Son for commissioner. So, just correct in the record, because I think earlier you said OAN supports you. I think definitively they don't. Let me ask a final question, which is a really important one, and it relates to the policies that you would be really overseeing, and it relates to rural broadband connectivity uh, for rural communities. You know, um, we just had an infrastructure bill that focused on this. A lot of people talk about it, and you have. You know, it's important for urban areas to go from 4G to 5G. You know, I always raise my hand and say, hey, what about no G? What about no G? My state, like, is not connected at all. And so the infrastructure bill prioritized rural communities. And yet, you have, again, come out with, I believe, an elitist urban rural view on broadband connectivity. And I'm not going to quote from you. I'm going to quote from an op-ed from Senator Heidi Heidkamp, who last year wrote an op-ed entitled, Gigi Son is wrong for the FCC in rural America. I'd like to submit that for the record, Madam Chair. Without objection. So in it, Senator Heidkamp, Democrat Senator Heidkamp, said that in your testimony before the House Energy and Commerce Committee, you said, quote, policymakers have focused disproportionately on, broad on broadband development in rural areas of the United States, unquote. Then, this is Senator Heidkamp talking here, um, Son also criticized the FCC broadband policies and claimed they made it, quote, really easy for rural broadband companies, this is now your, she's quoting you, to basically suck at the government's teat to the tune of tens of billions of dollars, unquote. It's pretty vitriolic in my view. And then here's how Senator Heitkamp summarizes her op-ed against your confirmation. Quote, given the significant progress that's been made in closing the rural digital divide in recent years and all the important work that remains to fully close the gap, this deeply cynical view of rural broadband by Gigi Son does not inspire confidence. I couldn't agree more. This is a gigantic issue for me and my constituents and for Democrats and Republicans. So do you still think senators like me quote, focus disproportionately on broadband development in rural areas, I guarantee you my constituents who have no G would fundamentally disagree with you. Yes, yeah, Senator, just because I said, just because I said they disproportionately focus doesn't mean that I don't support all efforts. And like I said, I was one of the biggest supporters of the BEAD program in the infrastructure bill. That doesn't mean I don't support rural broadband, but there has been, there, and particularly at the time, not so much now, okay? It's, it's interesting. You Well, this, I'm quoting you from 2020. Right, correct. I was ago. testifying, I was testifying at a hearing about closing the digital divide and digital equity. And I wanted to make the point that nobody really was talking about the digital divide in cities at the time, and that every, everybody was only talking about rural. Now we're talking about 
urban and rural, and I think that's really good. But you make the the statement makes it sound like because it's taken out of context. Of, you're, cri you're critical of legislators who are trying to close the rural divide. It, it again, it it makes me nervous about what you will do if you become the commissioner with now not only an anti-conservative view, an anti-Republican view, you have an anti-rural America view, and it's not just me saying it. Heidi Heidkamp said it. Senator, if you, if you would meet with me, and I think we are gonna meet, so I'm really happy about that, you will see that I know more about how to fix a digital divide in Alaska than most people. Okay, and I'd really love to talk to you about the substance because I've got all kinds of ideas. I share some of your concerns about the rural health care program, about, and about other programs. I care, and I have a lot of support in your state. You know, hopefully you've heard from some of them. So I do care deeply, particularly about your state and making sure everybody has broadband because I know it's the least connected state. It is. So I hope we do have an opportunity to actually talk about what's real in your state because I think I would be a fantastic Commissioner for the state of Alaska. I'm, I'm even willing to join that meeting, just as I've joined other <laughs> Alaska infrastructure meetings. I, uh, I, I want to compliment the chair on these kind no, of issues. No, it really is important. I mean, Alaska does have a very, very unique challenge, and all the things that you think you're going to do for all the rest of the states is not going to work in Alaska, so it needs its own plan. So I appreciate that, and I will happily attend that meeting. 